Hi and welcome back to the quarry garden and just before I start today's project I thought I'd walk you around all of the spring borders that I've got here in the top of the quarry garden. Now believe it or not where I'm walking this is all stone underneath a very small amount of um, soil and how these plants survive in here amazes me. Some of the hellebores um, are probably the best that I've got here in the garden. This is one of the orientalis um, hellebores, this one here, and it's absolutely stunning. And it's huge and it just grows year on year. And I can't understand why or how it does so well because hellebores usually like a quite a deep soil um, and it doesn't have it here. And for some reason, this does really well. The snowdrops are all just coming to the end of flowering now got quite a few that I'm yet to split but that's just an ongoing project that we have over the next couple of weeks. Lots of daffodils but they're yet to flower. But let me show you the main spring borders on the other side of the garden. So just before I leave this area I thought I would give you a glimpse of this gorgeous rhododendron. It's the first rhododendron to flower for me certainly here in the quarry garden and it's a Christmas cheer. A little bit late, I don't think it's ever flowered for me at Christmas time but what a stunning rhododendron. It's just a gorgeous pale pink flower. And we've got lots of heavy frost and snow forecasts for next week. So I think this will be the only chance I get to actually film it. Probably next weekend, it'll be gone. It'll be just brown flower heads. So I've got lots of hellebores in this area too, amongst all of the daffodils and spring bulbs. Some real pretty ones. And they're not all white. <laughs> I know I love to have white hellebores. This one's a beautiful pale white with a lemon. It's very pretty. I think this is a Harvington's white. And amongst it, we've got lots of pulmonorias. This is Sissinghurst white coming through. Blue Enzyme. This one here is Trevi Fountain. Lots of them just starting to poke through the ground into flower. And then so many other spring bulbs right through this area. So in this section of the um, spring borders, all the daffodils have just started to come through. Nothing has flowered as yet, apart from these tiny little tete tet daffodils on the, on the bank sides. And they look really pretty. But what I really wanted to show you was um, this section in front of me here where the winter aconites, the flowers have gone over, but they do actually leave a lovely leaf. It's a very pretty leaf. And growing through it, quite accidentally, wasn't planned, are the blue enzyme pulmonorias and I just think that looks really pretty how it carpets this whole area with a leaf cover. I would say around about 75% of this garden is a woodland garden hence why I have so many areas that are spring borders and one spring border that I started to plant up last I think it was November October November time it's just coming into its own now so I'll bring you in a little bit closer so you can see it. Now this border I planted up last, um, last autumn time with these Victoria um, hellebores. Look at that, it's a double orientalis. Isn't that just gorgeous? I love those very deep purples. And then moving along, the one in the centre is Ice and Roses and that one's early red. Now that's a new addition this year because one of the other ones didn't come back. But in here I've got tete tets, I've got snowdrops which I've just added this year, I've got some ferns, I've got a big gap at the back here, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to add there, and then lots of daffodils. But it's a new border and it's actually developing quite well so I'm pleased with it. So I've got one more spring border to show you and that's the one that I've worked on earlier, um, a few weeks ago, earlier this month, and it's the white spring border down in the lower quarry garden. So this is the white spring border down here in the lower quarry garden just around this big sycamore tree and it's at its peak now looks really pretty especially with the rain drops on the top of the snowdrops doesn't get much better than this really pleased with this one so right in the middle of this white spring border is this gorgeous hellebore and this is definitely my favorite and i know i say that to about a lot of them but this is a harvington's double white and it's just got a pale green lemon colour to it. 
and it's just beautiful. It's so delicate and it's absolutely stunning. So today's project is to make something out of this area which is opposite the spring borders. Now it's a neglected area. It's an area that I've left over the last um, couple of years because I couldn't do anything with it. I couldn't think what to do with it. And the main reason why is it's solid sandstone. You probably can't see, but it's got a tiny little, I don't know, about a millimetre of soil on the top. And all of the tree roots from this um, beech tree have gone right over the surface. Can't actually penetrate and get anything into the ground here. No plants or bulbs. This section's not too bad. Around the trees, probably from all the leaf mould over the years, it's not too bad either. I've managed to get bulbs in this year, daffodil bulbs and some snowdrops. So I had to think outside the box, what could I do with this area? Could place pots on it, that would look quite pretty. But I wanted something a little bit more permanent. So these are sections of um, a tree trunk. It's from a tree that came out in Storm Arwen from a silver birch. And I thought, right, I'm going to try and do something architectural here. Something that will look good. Now I am going to create a stumpery down the very bottom of the quarry garden. So I thought this is a bit of a precursor, it's a bit of a practice run. Try and create something here with bits of wood and ferns and hostas all around this section. Now obviously, as I've just said, it's all sandstone and I need to get plants in the ground. So what I'm going to have to do is make something like a bit of a raised bed and add garden soil around these um, sections of wood, these tree stumps. So what I've been doing is adding this around the base of each tree just so I can get plants into the ground. And where I've actually got this soil from, it came from the white garden. Now when I dug out the white garden, which was about two years ago now, I actually retained all of the grass sods that I actually lifted. And this is them. Dug it all out by hand. And I created piles. All of these piles came from the white garden and grass to grass on top of each other all the way through here and it creates fabulous soil at the end of the day. It takes about two years to actually break down but when it breaks down it's beautiful soil. This um, pile here was the last to come out so it's got about another six months to go. The other piles it's created gorgeous soft, probably the best soil in the garden. So I'm using it to raise up the areas around these sections of wood. And I'm going to add the ferns, some bulbs, and then it's going to grow um, and develop over the next year. Need to edge the grass along the, the front here as well, just to make it look more like a border. So let me do some of it and I'll show you how I get on at the end. just about finished edging this new spring border. Definitely makes a difference when you edge your borders. Even if there's nothing else going on inside the border, just edging it makes it look good. But anyhow, I did get quite a bit done today. I added all of the soil around these um, sections of tree stumps and added the ferns, a few teddy ted daffodils, and also some um, hellebores. Now, every year, around about this time of year, I do lift a lot of hellebore seedlings. And they're mainly just orientalis um, hellebores, pinks and whites. I think they're actually called hybridus now, hellebore hybridus. They've changed their name. Anyhow, I think these will look nice just around the back. It's quite sheltered behind these, um, these tree stumps. So I think they should look okay. That's as far as I've got. Obviously, I have to wait now until the rest of the um, soil is ready to use to actually um, spread around more of this area where I can add more plants. But it's worked out okay. I've lifted quite a few snowdrops as well as I've gone along. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to add them here. I'll think about that one. 
but that's it I'm actually quite tired now and quite cold so that's it for today thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon